Calvary makes you a different person. It makes you different. And the things that you used to want to do all the time, you don't want to do them no more. Amen? Um, do not turn your Bible to Second Chronicles. Turn instead to the book of Judges, if you would. Turn to the book of Judges, chapter 1, and I'll tell you what, let me do this. I'm going to try to pull something up here real quick. So while I'm doing this, if anybody's got a testimony they want to share, please do that so I can stall for time. Anybody, 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 help me out. Testimony about Calvary, what it did for you. Judges chapter 2, and I want you to look at the screen. And then just hold your place. I want to read a, a piece out of Judges 2. We're going to go to Ecclesiastes, and we're going to go back to Judges. Um, <clears throat> I let some people down this week. I was supposed to be here Thursday night, and um, I guess the devil tied me up, and I couldn't make it, and I just feel like I let some people down, but uh, we've been looking at, I think, an, an issue that not, not just people who have addictions need to learn or need to remember. Today I'm not going to give you anything that I have not taught before. I always like to try to be fresh and just preach new things. But sometimes let's go back and let's, let's remember things that we may have learned before. I need it. And I'm sure you'll need it as well. But we, were, we started a Bible study on... Cycles. And I want you to look at this picture up on the screen. And that is you. Everything about that is you. 
we cut a tree down and we look and we see those rings, what do, that, what do those rings tell us? That the rings can tell us basically the entire life of that tree can be seen in those rings. When I was a kid, I was told this by my daddy. He cut a tree down and say, see that? Those rings represent, if you can count those, that's how old that tree is. And so I just look at it and I just start counting. One, two, three, four, five. My goodness, this tree's 75 years old. This tree's 100 years old. But you can tell more than that about those rings. You can tell on those rings, sometimes the rings will be wide, sometimes they'll be narrow. What do you think that means? What do you think that represents? Huh? Yeah, moisture level. You can tell if there's been a lot of rain in a certain year. You can just, it's just like looking at a history book. You can go back and look and tell with, for that particular tree about how much rain they had that year. And if it's a thick ring, they had a lot of rain. If it's a thin ring, they didn't have very much rain. And even you could tell maybe when there was a forest fire, where fire swept through, because it'll char the, the bark on that tree. And that listen to this now, that char never goes away. How many of y'all get something out of that? Sometimes you've been through the fire. And you made it through it. But the charring just doesn't go away. It's always there. And that tells the story of your life. So my favorite psalm, one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Therefore, he shall be like a tree. So that's the Bible telling you that you're a tree. And what this picture represents is the cycles that that tree has gone through. Now, we live northern hemisphere which means we have seasons. If you live on the equator, you live in Hawaii. I've said this before, I'd hate to be a weatherman in Hawaii. High temperature today, 88 degrees. Chance of rain, 80%. Tomorrow, same thing. And they pay them for that. But up here, the weather changes. And up here, after the summertime, we're fixing to walk into this now, fixing to get into September, you're going to start noticing the change. By the way, we're getting close to harvest. The harvest, and bless God, we've had a lot of rain this year. Amen? Well, that'll show up in the fruit. They say it makes a difference in the taste of the wine. It makes a lot of difference in how the apples taste, the peaches, everything. Depends on that, what, what kind of year it was. So you go through that, and then wintertime comes, and what happens to all those leaves and all that magnificent fruit? It's gone. It's gone away, and that tree lies dormant. Doesn't do much. It's just there. Is it, is it going to survive the winter? Hopefully. But even though, listen to this now, even though it may seem dead, Wait till spring. Spring comes. God just, and it just, it boggles my mind. How is it that every flower, every tree, every blade of grass in the world knows when it's springtime? How do they know that? What tells them that it's time to start putting out buds and flowers again. Who directs that? Is that all by chance, evolution? No way. 
God speaks it. And it happens. We don't understand the mechanism of spring and how spring reacts. They say, well, that the, the trees detect the temperature. I don't think so. Because sometimes it stays cold through, through April. But how do they know? There has to be something that triggers them. And I know what it is. It's the word of God. And all of a sudden now it starts blooming out again. And things start great. Things. It looks pretty again. And you've gone all winter without the smell of fresh cut grass. And that first cut of grass, you drive by somebody's house. Oh, I like that smell. Well, all that means is you got grass to cut when you get home. That's what that means. But it smells wonderful. And it goes through that every year. In fact, we go through it every night. Now, let's read Judges chapter 2. And I want you to look. At, let's start at verse 14. Let's read this. In fact, no, 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 no. Got to go back to 11. Now, Judges is right after Joshua. Joshua and his armies fought all the battles to win the land. Think of World War II. We were invaded. Our homeland was invaded, Pearl Harbor. We had to fight a battle to save our country, did we not? And they called that generation the greatest generation. Well, they were great for a reason. Okay? And it had everything to do with the Word of God in this country and the respect that the people of this nation had for God had everything to do with that. And that was the greatest generation. And the generations have declined ever since then. So it's this younger generation that's up there trying to burn down Portland and Seattle and Washington, D.C. and trying to burn down all of our cities and tear everything down because they've heard that communism is great. Baloney. So what happens after, jo after Joshua is you've got a new generation in the land that didn't have to fight for it. So whenever you give things to children that they didn't earn, more than likely, what are they going to do? Break it. Tear it up. Why? It was given to them. I'll get another one. My daddy will give me another one. That's what they think. So God had a reason for everything he did. Look at verse... Look at verse... Um, 11, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And, the Lord for, and, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he delivered into them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them. He sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not longer stand before their enemies. Listen to your Bible. Have you had those days where you could not stand up against your enemies? And you know who your enemies are, don't you? Lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. Pride of life. You know what the pride of life sin is? It's all those people who say, well, bless God, I don't lust and I don't have any lust in me. That's pride of life people. That's the people who look at everybody else and say, I don't know what their problem is, that why, they, why they've got sin in their life. I don't. That's, that's pride. And let me tell you what's worse. I'd rather deal with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes than to deal with pride because God forsakes the proud but he gives grace to the humble. But anyway, so what happened is because they got into sin and lasciviousness, they forsook God, God turned them over to the hands of the enemies and they could not fight their enemies. So then, uh, verse 15, whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. That's where some people are today. Greatly distressed. Nevertheless, look at verse 16. Nevertheless, what does that word mean? It means God says, it don't bother me. I'm going to help you. That's what nevertheless means. 
The Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went a-whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. And they turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord. But they did not do, they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in, the fo in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. And in verse 20, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because that this people have transgressed my covenant which I commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice, I will also not hence, listen to this now, listen to this, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations with Joshua left when he died. You see, God told Joshua to eliminate every Canaanite. Did he do it? No. You know why? He couldn't. couldn't that's why you didn't you couldn't you couldn't quit you couldn't walk away so who left them there God did now they got rid of most of them so, everybody look up here for a minute. Would you say that since you started serving God, your life definitely is better than it used to be, thanks to Calvary? We don't go there anymore, amen? But not all of your enemies are gone. Some of them are still there. So look at verse... Um, 19, it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. The anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he said because that this people which have transgressed my covenant which I commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore, verse 23, therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. God left them there. Father, I ask for your help today. I need a lot of it. And let this be a blessing Starting with me, working your way down to everybody that needs to hear it today. We love your word. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Now put, we'll put something different up on the screen for you to look at. God knows us. God knows us inside out. God knows, listen to me, God knows who's sitting here playing church and God knows who's real. God knows the people that are walking with him today and are doing well and God knows the heart of those who are here today and they're not doing very well and God knows you. God had to teach me this. I didn't learn it, Bible, they don't have a course in Bible college called the Cycles of Christian Growth. I didn't know anything about it. But I was down on my face before God one day, many years ago. And I said, God, you have to do something with me. Because I'm not right, and I can't fix myself. And I used to have this high opinion of everybody that I went to church under when I was a boy here, I used to think they never did anything wrong. Once they, I guess, got to be a certain age, sin left, and they was all fine. And they never had any problems. So I'm a grown-up now, and I'm waiting for that to show up. It never showed up. And I said, God, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. 
And the Holy Ghost just spoke that word, seasons. Mike, you're in a season. And you need to understand that. Then one day I was out, just kind of camped out in St. Francis Park. It was during the late fall. I was just out there just taking a day to myself. And I'm sitting there on a rock ledge and I'm overlooking, what is that, the big river there at St. Francis? Is that the big river? And God, I'm just sitting there looking at it, and God says, Mike, which way is that going? And I understood what the Holy Ghost was getting at. I said, it's going down. Water goes down. First rule of plumbing. Water goes down. And I understood that it was getting lower all the time. From the big river to the Mississippi to the ocean, and the ocean's very deep, very deep, and there's water down there. And then what happens is exactly what God showed, God showed this to Solomon, and nobody knew this before that. Nobody figured this out. Because look in, look in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 4. One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh. But the earth abideth forever. Now think about this. One generation comes, that person lives their life. And before most in most cases, before they die out of that life, they reproduce themselves, then they die, and another generation comes in. That generation will do the same thing. It'll reproduce itself, it will die, another generation comes in. But and we are Adam. We're all of us sitting here are Adam and Eve. In this church, Adam and Eve. Same people. And then he said, verse 5, The sun also riseth, and the sun goeth down, hasteth to his place where he arose. Now you can look at that and say, Boy, Solomon, he was smart, wasn't he? He figured out that the sun came up and the sun went down. Yippee. But he's in that context now, he's, he's laying out an ideology for you to follow. The generations are cycles of life. One is born, one lives, reproduces, he dies. Another is born, reproduces, he lives, he dies. Another is born, so on. Sun goes up, sun goes down. Then he says, verse 6, The wind goes toward the south and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about. How long? Is there anything in God's creation that does not go in cycles? Nothing. The universe turns. That's how, we, that's how we measure time. The sun, the moon are cycles. The stars in the sky are seasonal cycles. We, I, know two, I know two constellations. That's it. The Big Dipper and Orion. And you can see the Big Dipper now. It's summertime, but you can't see it in the wintertime. You can see Orion in the wintertime. You cannot see Orion in the summertime. And that's all. Uh, and by the way, when they say that's, that's a bear up there, that don't look like a bear to me. I don't know why they call it. That's the great bear. I'm going, that doesn't look like a bear. But anyway, I just know that. But that's how they measured time. Because they knew, the old timers looked at the stars and they knew that star wasn't here six months ago. So they measured it. They figured out how to measure it. Then he says, verse 7, all the rivers run into the sea. And this is where God's now, he's having me look at the big river. But he hasn't given me the scripture yet, but he's going to. He says, Mike, look at that river. Where, where is it going? It's going down. Mike, so will you. Mike, you're not going to be up all the time. You're not going to be doing well every day of your life, Mike. Mike, some days you're going to get down in the pit again, in the, sea, in the bottom of the sea. But Mike, when you got there the last time, did I not pull you out? Yeah, you did. And then I lifted you up. Yeah, you did. And you stayed there 
forever, right? No. What happened? I started coming back down. So you look at this. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Does the sea ever get, does it ever rise up? If this was like 3,000 years ago, surely the Mississippi River would have flooded, the sea would have flooded a whole continent. Yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. So I'm going to be like your weatherman. Some of you today are right here in the depths. Some of you are. And you're wondering, I thought I was saved. I thought I was a Christian. I thought I was right with God. But yet here I am down here again. This is where, this is where I was when God found me. Why am I down here again? And if God, don't, if God doesn't reach down and pull you up out of that, you're doomed. By the way, where did God put all your sins? Right here. And he left them there. When he picked you up, and what is it that picks up water out of the ocean? Buckets? The Corps of Engineers? What? Sunlight and wind. Who's the sun? Who's the wind? So it's the sun and the wind picking the water up out of the ocean. Where did all that water in that hurricane come from? That warm Gulf of Mexico water. And God speaks from the whirlwind. Did, did God say something to America, you think? So he picks us up. And here we are. Seeing then, Hebrews 12, that we are encompassed with such great cloud of witness. Now we're the people of God up here. And we've got, we've got Enoch and Elijah and Moses and Paul and John and Timothy and all these great people from the Bible as witnesses with us because we're surrounded by the clouds. And we're right with God. Been there? Some of you are there now. Praise God. It won't last. Because what happens when we stay up here, Brother George, too long? What happens? We get arrogant. We get full of pride, don't we? You know what would become? Clouds without water. And clouds without water are only good for one thing, and that is blocking the rest of the earth from the light of the sun. And who do we say the sun was? So now that we're clouds, what are we doing? We're not showing forth Christ. We're keeping the world from him. And we're no good. You see that? So what has to happen? How does the water from the ocean, now that it's up here, how does it get back down here? God said, the prophet said, my tears fall down as rain. And God said that he would send the showers down upon the people. His doctrine would distill as the showers and as the dew on the grass. So what has to happen is, God has to bring us down so that we can be a blessing to people once again. How many of you see that? Now, let's go back. There's a cycle there. Let's go back to uh, Judges chapter 3 now. Judges chapter 3. And I'm going to show you the cycles that Israel went into, and I'm going to show you what God did.
A man told me years ago, Mike, you can never be my pastor. And those words stuck with me. Because that was said to me at a time when I was absolutely no good. But very, very prideful, very prideful. And God had to bring me down. And He did. And I didn't think I was ever going to get back up. Think about this verse. A just man falleth, what? But then what? He riseth back up again, doesn't he? Is, does God mean exactly that? Yes, he does. A just Christian, a justified, born-again Christian will rise and fall. He will rise and and then he will fall again. He will rise, and then he will fall again. And God is the one who initiates every one of those cycles, does he not? See, I mean it. There are some people, there are some people who are not here today because they're down there. And I asked them to listen today because I thought I was going to preach the other message. Now I'm preaching this one, and this one I think works better. Because there may be some people here who are down there, just don't want to tell anybody. How you doing? I'm doing great. It's just fake and phony. But you're down there. When God is ready, he will lift you back up. I mean, look at what he did back here in Judges. Did not God send Gideon? Did not God send Samson? Did not God send Samuel? Did he not send every one of those judges, those great men in the book of Judges? Did, did not God send every single one of them? And he used them as saviors and judges to raise those people back up to righteousness. Right now, our country is going down. But is there yet hope for America? If God's in it, there is. But we've got to get down there first. So now look at chapter 3 of Judges. This is for the generation, my generation, who didn't fight World War II. My generation throws food away. My generation after so many years, throws the car away and buys a new one instead of fixing the old one. My generation and younger generations did not have to fight and work for everything that they had. So my generation and younger just throws things away. To them, it's not precious. But to that generation who came out of the Depression, who came out of World War II... They didn't throw nothing away. And if it was broke, they didn't go buy a new one. They fixed it. Think about a marriage. You don't just throw it away. You fix it. Now, I know some of them can't be fixed. I get that. But at least try. Try. So look at Judges 3. Now these are the nations which the Lord left. God is making it very clear why, why, Roy, you awake? Barney Five? Here he comes. Roy, if you could take a drink today and not one want tomorrow, would you do it? Well, I was kind of hoping for a different answer. <laughs> Here's what he's told us. He said before, if I could drink three fingers today and, and smoke a pack of cigs today and not 
worry about doing it tomorrow, I'd do it. But he can't. Because you know what God left in him? Alcohol. He left it there, and he won't take it away from him in this life. Never will. But that's a different man than he used to be 30 years ago. A better man. A stronger man. You see that tree? Now, when the tree is this, it's a baby. And in, chances are, may not last. Right? But what happens with every one of these rings? What's God doing? God is strengthening the tree with every cycle, with every season with everything that happens, God is strengthening you. That's what he's doing. So look at, look at Judges 3. He said, These are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. If my generation doesn't fight to save this country, we'll lose it. And if I didn't fight... To save my own soul, I would have lost it. Now, I don't think I'm teaching work salvation because I'm not. But I'm telling you, I've fought these battles before. That's how I have some hope that what I'm fighting now, God's taking me through to make me stronger. So the next time I fight it, I know how to do it. Let me explain it to the video game generation. When you get a new video game, I'm still plugging cartridges in. You don't do that anymore. When you get a new video game and you start playing it, in the first three minutes, boom, you get blown up. So what do you do? Restart. So now you know that you're going to walk this way and a guy's going to come around from this building over here and you're going to be going boom, 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 boom. And then you're going to go boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, bam, you get killed again. What do you do? Restart. And every time you play that, you figure out where they put all the bad guys and all the zombies, right? All the aliens, all the Democrats. Figured out where they all are, right? Hey, is God not exposing where the evil is? You listen to, the, you listen to your Bible. We have a nation of people who have not had to fight for the freedoms that this nation provides, but I think the fight's coming. And will it be worth it? All the stuff that you went through before, when you look at it now, was it not worth it? Verse 2, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. You know what God's... There's my beautiful granddaughter. Now she's like a tree. Full of sap. Amen? But sap is sweet. But she's very, very... What's the word I'm looking for? Iffy. Delicate. She can't handle much right now. But gosh, she's cute. When she's like that, she is absolutely a darling. Okay? But she hasn't had to fight any battles yet. As she gets older, Courtney, do you remember times in your childhood when you had to fight battles? Eight, nine, ten years old, 12 years old, 14 years old, 17 years old, 19 years old, 25 years old. You learned how to fight 
Daddy, Daddy couldn't fight for you no more. She had to learn how to do it herself. But every time she did, you get a little stronger. You see that? Namely, the five lords of the Philistines and the Canaanites and Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in the Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal, Hamron, under the inner ring and of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of their Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And so God leaves them there to prove you. Everybody, everybody in this building, look around at everybody else in this building. Just go. Everybody look around. See all these people? They are rotten to the core. Amen. Amen. Including the guy with the big beard sitting in the back row. You know what, you know what I think he likes about this church? This, this kind of stuff right here, we're honest. He fits in, doesn't he? He stinks like the rest of us. By the way, I got a pocket full of candy for you guys. See me after church, all right? But here's the thing. God left him there to prove you. Brother George, how long have you been in church? 50 years? Have you seen a lot of fakes in 50 years? Phony Christians. And God always has a way of showing it, doesn't he? He proves who really is his and who isn't. Because in 50 years' time, I guarantee you, you've seen folks come in and then folks get out. And I'm not, not mean go to some other church. I mean out, get out. In 50 years, have you not been tempted to leave? See, God uses all of that to strengthen you, to prove that if I needed somebody, that I needed somebody to, that I could call and say, will you pray for me? I really need prayer. I know I could call that man back there. Because he's been through it. Amen? He's like a tree. Ba go to Psalm 1. Let's go to that. Let's finish that verse and I'll let you go. Verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit when? In his season. You're not always going to be bringing forth fruit. Sometimes you're going to be down in the pit. Sometimes you're going to be down in the ocean, in the bottom. God will send the call. He'll bring you back up. But in order to use you, He'll have to bring you back down so He can be used. So you can water the land, put water in the wells, water in the creek, water in the rivers so that people can be fed by the water, the crops can be blessed by the waters, the whole world is blessed by the waters. Other things now are coming back to life because God is using you, because he's brought you back down to where you need to be, but you're still going down. Will that ever stop in this life? No. No. Always going to be that way but God is strengthening you and he's teaching you how to fight battles that you've never had to fight before now back to Sparky here this ain't her first time with a child however this is your first run in it isn't it yeah makes a difference, doesn't it? 
Big difference. He's learning. And after a while, it gets better. I'll never forget the first time that Lindsay laughed at me. Lisa left me home babysitting one night, which was a huge mistake. Because I didn't know what I was doing. But I had her on the floor, she was bawling her eyes out, and I started acting silly, and I finally got her to laugh at what I did. At that point right there, I'm going, ah, she's mine now. She thinks I'm funny. She still does. But Lindsay and I, and Alicia and I, and Courtney and I, and Matthew and Caleb, We've grown in our relationship. And everything that we've been through has made us stronger. My mother and my sister, we've grown in our relationship. Trish, we've grown in our relationship, haven't we? It was hard starting out, but it's a lot better now because God has taken us through the cycles and strengthened us and made us better than we used to be. So here's, here's, he's proving you, whether you're fake or not. And if you'll be in for this, I promise you, the fruit that God will manifest in your life will be worth it. The next time God uses this church to save somebody else from starving to death, or to save somebody who's so deep into sin that they don't know that they'll ever get out of it, and God saves them because of this church, it's happened many times before, and I can't wait for it to happen again. And I know that what I'm going through and what you're going through, what I know is it'll be worth it. When the season comes for fruit, It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it to somebody else out here in this area, somebody else out here in this country, somebody else over in Kenya, somebody else anywhere in the world. It'll be worth it. Let's bow our heads. I want you to examine your life to see where you are. Are you up? Are you doing good? That's good. There's nothing wrong with that. God bless you. That's where we wanted to be. But are you a blessing to other people? And if not, God will bring you back down. But then you'll keep going down. But then, God will bring you back up again. He did it last night and this morning. You both went to sleep and woke up. It happens every day, every month, every year, every season. Some of the planets move around the sun quicker than others. Some people go through these seasons quickly, daily, while some it takes longer. So don't ever judge anybody. God has them on a different time, a different schedule. But God has them. Father, we come before you today. Lord, you know the reason for everything that everybody that I know is going through right now. You know the reason for it. Father, the ultimate is that you're teaching us how to fight. You're teaching us how to know warfare. You're teaching us, God, that if our salvation, if our relationship with you is really that precious, we'll fight to save it. We'll do whatever it takes 
And Father, there's some people, God, I love them. But I know they're down. I know they are. And I don't judge them. Because I've been down there. And Father, if it, if it isn't you that brings them back up, they won't be able to do it themselves. So Father, when we get down there, we realize, Lord, that if we cry out unto you, you'll bring us back up once again. And Father, you'll do it every time. Every time. Just like that tree. You'll do it every time. So Father, where we are, whatever season we are, however we are, Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for it because, Father, we know that we're going to come back around again and it'll be your work in our life, not ours. Father, we thank you for showing us this for our marriage, for our family relationships, for our relationship with you, our relationship with people in this church. Father, for our country, our very salvation. Thank you, God, for showing us this. We needed it. I needed it. And I pray, dear God, that this would help somebody today. And that through helping somebody, fruit would be manifested. More lives would be saved. More souls would be won for Jesus. Because, Father, that's really all I care about. Is your kingdom and your vineyard. Bless your word today. Bless these people. Thank you, Lord, for letting me preach to them today what's on my heart. We ask you to help us now in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Would you stand?